Malaria is a deadly disease transmitted by the bite of a female Anopheles mosquito. At the moment, to cure malaria, the world relies on one very effective drug called artemisinins. Unfortunately, resistance to artemisinins emerged in Western Cambodia several years ago. This is where resistance to chloroquine started more than 50 years ago and then spread to Africa and resulted in millions of deaths in African children. If artemisinin-resistant parasites, strong, healthy, fit artemisinin-resistant parasites, or the genes that in those parasites are exported to India and Africa, we don't have a replacement drug for the artemisinins in the near future. That will translate into a rising tide of morbidity and mortality. It's therefore critical that we eliminate malaria in this region. We have to reach out to the people who might be carrying malaria and treat them before they're able to transmit malaria through the bite of a mosquito. This is challenging because malaria in this region is transmitted in the forest. So the people who get malaria tend to be highly mobile adult males who go deep into the forest to work and some of them will be carrying malaria and parasites but not have symptoms. One of the strategies that has been proposed to eliminate malaria is called active case detection, which is where you actively screen people for malaria, whether or not they have symptoms, and then give them a full course of treatment to kill off the parasites so they can't be transmitted to someone else. There are lots of questions about how to do this on the ground, for example, how to reach the at-risk population, who should be screened, and whether they'll actually agree to participate. The PACES research project is trying to answer some of these questions. We are carrying it out in Odominche province on the Cambodian Thai border, about two hours north of Angkor Wat. It's an operational research project where we are trying to screen and treat household, neighbour and forest going contacts of patients who have presented with symptomatic malaria. The foundation of any malaria control or elimination programme is a functioning health system where you can test and treat people early if they've got symptomatic malaria. So in this case, village malaria worker, a volunteer, who is on call all the time if someone pitches up with symptoms of malaria. She can screen them with a rapid diagnostic test and treat them. In addition for that, for malaria elimination, as well as people who've got symptoms, we're trying to see if we can find and treat people who've got malaria in their bloodstream but don't have symptoms. It's quite challenging. We have found that there is a sub-microscopy that we cannot detect it through our conventional RDT. And in that uh, context, we have been working closely with uh, our researcher, like a London School of Hygiene, and also our partner, like ASD to, in order to, how to detect of this asymptomatic parasite. And one of the ways we're doing is this, is, is what we call reactive case detection. So this is where you have an index case, so meaning a patient who's got symptomatic falciparum malaria. So our response team, who are based in the, health the local health centre, then come out and do a, an investigation. So if you find uh, the index case or have identified the index case, it's important to find the other individuals related to the index case that also carry the parasites. And just checking the houses around this index case is often not the best way to find those additional cases. The yield can be very low, especially in the countries here, where most of the infections are acquired in the forests. In the past, we've just thought it's people who've got a fever or who report having a fever. So we did test those people. But we also asked an additional question of, have you stayed overnight in the forest in the last month? And what we found was it was that, that story of having stayed overnight in the forest, which was a much more sensitive indicator of whether someone had malaria or not. But actually, if they'd reported staying overnight in the forest in the last month, about 20% were positive for malaria. We focus quite a lot of our social science research on trying to understand what people's understanding of um, asymptomatic malaria was. What we found was that by explaining to people that if they had Miro, which caused malaria, in their bloodstream and they didn't have symptoms, they could go on to develop symptoms. And developing symptoms of Gunjang means that basically they couldn't work. So there was a willingness to be screened and be treated on the understanding that it would mean that they didn't develop symptomatic malaria and could therefore continue working. So that was one of the, one of the ways, I guess, that people 
understood the threat of asymptomatic malaria and were willing to participate. Over the last 10 years, our scientific knowledge has massively increased. We have now better understanding of what is artemisinin resistance or, let's say, uh, partial artemisinin resistance. We have now tools to better map artemisinin resistance. We know the role that is playing the partner drug in the treatment failure. But more importantly, uh, the country have understood that to get rid of this parasite, it's no more a problem of containment project as we did 10 years ago, but it's more a problem of elimination. And the country have committed, even at the highest level, up to the head of states, that elimination is the way to go to get rid of these parasites. ម្ចាស់ម្ដុលជាតិប្រយុទ្ធនិងជាងមួយគ្រាន់ចាញ់ប្រាស៊ីតសាសន៍និងបណ្ណកសាសន៍នៃក្រសួងសុខាភិប